what's going on and welcome back this big boy right here is one of the most commanding cards and decks in marvel snap so why exactly is this hunk of steel one of the most popular decks that players choose to take to infinite now today's deck guy truly only takes one card to play and that's the high octane destroyer himself He's one of the easiest decks and cards to play now today i'm going to teach you everything you need to know about the cards the decks the supporting friends that you're going to want to play with the destroyer and then most importantly that strategy that you can quickly master you'll be drunk off cosmic cubes in no time so why should you play destroyer decks now we covered some of that in the intro but seriously if i'm having a losing streak or i'm just you know having one of those days like we've all had the destroyer is a deck that i fall back to for consistency it's by far one of the best decks in pool three with just a low investment of tokens you can have so many pool one cards in pool two that fit into the deck and then we'll have plenty of options that we can upgrade if need be number two this deck wins fast if you only have a few minutes to play the game this is often the one that i pick and play guys i choose this deck while i'm cooking dinner watching a show i'm talking to you marvel snap bathroom players when you sneak away from wherever you're supposed to be now number three the deck has just early signs of when to snap to get the most profit from cubes and it's got so many win conditions that it's really hard for the opponent to prep for both of them. They oftentimes think you're going to play one and you play the other. And that's what makes the deck so great. And then lastly, the meta changes, but the destroyer stays the same. Even with a nerf that came to the card, it still sees plenty of play. We're going to continue to get ongoing cards and cards that will aid this deck. So it's one that you won't have any buyer's remorse on the token shop buy. Now, the Destroyer is one of the purest power cards in the game. He's going to be sporting a 6 energy, 15 power card, which is absolutely insane and plenty to win one location. Now, he does come with the con of, you know, destroying every card on the board on your side, which can be a bummer. But luckily, there are ways to tame this beast with multiple different options to use to our advantage. So let's talk about these main neutralizing options that can tame the Destroyer. We start with a card that everybody has in armor. Now, armor is great because you're going to be using this card as the main strategy of the deck. Essentially, with this deck, you're only focusing on two lanes. You're going to abandon one altogether. And armor is going to be one of the main lanes that we use to focus on. You'll see here in a moment, but the other cards that we complement in this deck will be played into this lane for maximum effect. And armor is a great card for the main reason of obviously protecting you from the on reveal effect of the destroyer. Now, lucky for us, at the time of making this video, the majority of these neutralizers are found in other people's decks because they're often ran in meta decks themselves, which is only going to help us. If your opponent plays an armor, even better, you can start building in that lane as well. Uh, but the other card that everybody is playing at the moment is going to be Cosmo, and this is probably the biggest neutralizer of the Destroyer uh, because A, it's a big counter tech card, but B, it's the only card outside of one other that's going to stop the destroyer from actually using his effect and that allows you to have instantly 18 power in one lane which is incredible now those are the main two neutralizers but you can also run mr professor x here obviously a card that only gets better as you make your way through snap and you get early access to him in pool one the professor is going to be awesome to pair with the destroyer because obviously he's going to lock down that lane He's awesome to pair with Rescue Spider-Man. Set him up early and you should be good to go. A little bit of a YOLO play at times, but definitely an efficient way to protect the Destroyer. Look to play him in lanes like Death Domain, Superflow, those locations that your opponent is trying to avoid. And then you can quickly go ahead and get a free lane and then have the Destroyer to get the other. Now, focusing on the last neutralizer in the deck, we've got another pool three card in zero. It's probably the least played out of the ones we've talked about in Destroyer decks. But he's starting to find more homes in some meta decks out there. And Destroyer can definitely benefit off the card. Play him on turn 5, you play Destroyer on turn 6, and there's your profit. Uh, or you can have him with Magic and a couple other options. If you do have this card unlocked, it's never bad to have a fail safe. But with the other options at hand, we can typically reliably counter the negative effects of destroyer but i like zero i plug him into plenty of decks and i sometimes run him with my destroyer as well so that just about covers the main win condition the destroyer himself you're gonna pull him in about 75 percent of your matches but what about the other 25 percent and the other win condition that is going to be our lady spectrum now this truly guys is what does make this deck so powerful against opponents in their mind games because they're not able to prepare for either or of these win conditions. Now, you don't always want to play the Destroyer. Hell, there's plenty of times 
Spectrum is the better option on turn six. And so identifying that is one of the biggest keys to playing this deck successfully. Uh, but either way, you're going to have ongoing cards for all of the complementing cards in this deck. Even with something like Professor X, where you shut down a lane early, you can boost them up with a little bit of power with a plus two will go a long way. Love Spectrum in this deck. For whatever reason, always people assume the Destroyer is coming and they prep for that, but not the big Spectrum play. Now, the cards you play in this deck are super important. And before we dive into those, let's talk about the core strategy. Now, with this deck, we're going to really be focusing on shutting down two lanes. We don't care about one of them. Two of them is our focus, as it should be always. Uh, but more often than not, your opponent is going to get tunnel vision on one location early on, kind of stake their dominance, let them have it. We're going to focus on the other two. And by the time they try to catch up, they're not going to be able to keep up with either the Destroyer for the 15 power or Spectrum for the plus two on top of our lane. Now, this might change if your opponent plays Armor or Cosmo. You can kind of change this tactic up. But for the most part, that is going to be the core strategy of the deck. Now, yes, there's a few optional cases to play more on reveal cards, but we have two lanes. We've got our protected lane from Armor or Cosmo, and then we also have our Destroyer lane. So we're going to look at two separate lanes and the graphics and cards as such. First up, we've got the winning lane. These are the ones you obviously don't want to be destroyed. And the cards you want to stack on each other for their powerful ongoing effects to either, again, safely be played in armor, behind Cosmo, or more importantly, have Spectrum boost them all up for the final finish. No huge surprises here. And again, you guys can see loads of pool one and two options. Uh, we've got Ant-Man, Ebony Maw, Mr. Fantastic, Captain America, cards you don't use a ton. And let's break down why you want to use them and what other cards you might want to consider in the winning lane. Now, Ant-Man, a 1-4 if you do have other cards at the location maxing it out. And more often than not, most of the time, obviously, we're going to have this. So great card to play uh, for an early turn. We've got Mojo, who is one of the few pool 3 additions that you can upgrade this deck with. Mojo is fantastic. And he does spike up the deck in its overall potential uh, pretty quickly. Mojo's ongoing effect is going to give him plus 6 power, making him a 2-8 if both players have 4 cards at the location. And usually, your opponent is going to challenge your armor location and not your Cosmo Destroyer location. And so this one is fantastic uh, to save for the later plays, like turn 5. Or you can just get it out early and tell your opponent, like, hey, you know, this is my home. This is my lane. Stay out. Now, Mr. Fantastic is another card that fits into Destroyer decks uh, pretty well. Because he's going to give you Destroyer that extra power that he needs to win his lane. He has an ongoing effect and he can safely be played in the armor lane. If you see yourself pulling him early and you have armor, obviously play him in the middle for the better effect. Now, of course, we can't forget about America's ass. I always want to play Captain America. I mean, it's it's Captain America, but, you know, he doesn't fit into a lot of decks. Uh, but this is his home, guys, because you can lock down that armored uh, Cosmo location and give all of those cards plus one power. And then you add in a little bit of Spectrum and you can seriously ramp up that location to huge power potential. Uh, games where neither one of you can reach a closed off location and it's you know down to just total power. This guy comes in super clutch. Love the card in this deck. And uh, you finally get to play the Avenger. Next up is Warpath. And this guy is not played often, but my gosh, he's a good card. He's a four potential nine power, which is incredible. Now, you can have him be countered, you know, debris, green goblins, some bad locations. Uh, but by the time the locations show up, you know when to play him. And he can be great value for sure. Now, Sentry is a new pool five card that you can play somewhat with him as well. Uh, but Sentry has an on reveal effect. So we don't want to use that to, you know, go off the spectrum synergy. Uh, but Warpath, another great card that you don't often use. Uh, and that's the biggest part of this deck, right? You're not going to be using these cards all the time. So it takes some time uh, to get used to the way the cards play. Uh, other cards we have is obviously Iron Man for the big finish. Just in case your opponent's going all in for that armored lane or they've got kind of a death combo. But my friends, it's time to talk about probably one of my favorite cards in Destroyer decks and just with Snap. He's a, he's a solid one altogether. Mr. Claw, guys. Claw is a cube stealer and winner for several reasons. And he pairs perfectly with Spectrum if you don't even get Destroyer. Having four power and six power on another location is fantastic. Now, if you have Spectrum, that's a 6-6, six, six, so it's a 5-12. Guys, that's just 
That's ludicrous, crazy. You can push that power to locations that your opponent is not expecting or to something like Death's Domain for that cheeky win. Uh, you can even play them on turn six if you don't have any other options on those super rare games that you don't get either Spectrum or the Destroyer. Uh, but Claw for me is one of those mainstays in the deck. Now let's swap on over to the Destroyer lanes. These are the ones that are going to be, you know, subject to the huge death beam that comes from the card itself. These cards you can play safely, Colossus being the most obvious example. Uh, Colossus has an ongoing ability that's going to naturally fit into this deck. He's a 2-3, not bad, and he can't be destroyed. So love the card and include him in most of my builds. You also have the option to go with a destroy package. So Bucky Barn is often included with these decks. You can go with something like Carnage, Nova, and again, Century, and eat up his void for maximum potential. And what's really cool about Destroyer decks is there's multiple ways to play. Uh, like if you don't want to go full power on one location, you can troll and toxic a little bit with Hobgoblin or Green Goblin and just send negative power to the other locations. And then that way, it's kind of a nice fail safe just in case everything goes wrong. Uh, sometimes people put Daredevil in their decks to go ahead and capitalize uh, off the Hobgoblin and off some of the Professor X plays. He does naturally fit in there. And speaking of the other optional cards that you can run in Destroyer decks, uh, we've got options that all have low cost and ongoing abilities to go ahead and stack with Spectrum and the Destroyer. Now, Invisible Woman is perfect because obviously a huge con to this deck is that uh, a ton of people know what you're trying to do and will kind of back out early. This hides that option. Luke Cage is a cheap card that also protects you from any negative things on your side. Goose is fantastic to control one of the lanes. Hell, you can claw your power into that lane and play Destroyer on the other. Very difficult for your opponent to match that. Mr. Sandman sees just about zero play in Snap, but he's going to fit in, again, perfectly. This is like a deck for all the rejects and cards that just don't see a lot of play. Uh, Sandman's an ongoing card, and at the same time, he fits into this deck because uh, you really don't need to play a lot of cards after turn four. Now, he's going to severely kind of limit your power potential. Uh, I play him with Mojo and Ant-Man to kind of make up for that in that armor lane. Uh, but I like Sandman a lot. He fits in to kind of control the opponent and also give you a new winning advantage. And lastly, Omega Red, in my opinion, is, is more slept on. He definitely needs to be a little bit buffed, probably. Uh, but he's a fun card. And again, he works with the deck because you're going to oftentimes have tons of power in one lane. And that's how the card works the best. Uh, so you can run him again with Spectrum and some other options. I do like to include him more than others in my deck, and you'll see that today. Now, quickly, before we get to the decks, let's talk about locations that you want to look out for are things like Wakanda, Nowhere, Sherry's Lab, and Project Pegasus to get Destroyer out early. All of these are ones that I snap for pretty much immediately, as well as Onslaught's Citadel to go ahead and help out the Essential Armored Lane. Now, let's continue on and talk about the Destroyer and the decks that he works best in. Now, opposed to the other in-depth guys that I do on this channel, uh, the Destroyer is going to have a main shell of cards that just complement him perfectly. There's one core deck that just all works together. So many people lean to on their way to Infinite. We're obviously going to cover that. Uh, but the options and replacements, that's where it gets fun and you can kind of interchange things that works best for you and your playstyle. Now, this is the core Destroyer deck. This is going to be the one that the formula just works. The combos, the curve is magnificent. And we only have Mojo as our other pool three card. If you don't have Mojo, no big deal. Swap him out. You can put Professor X in there as well. Uh, or the number of other options, maybe Sandman if you want the control factor. Uh, Sandman right now is fantastic against Mr. Negative or Silver Surfer if you're struggling on those decks. And then you have other options that you can kind of slot and replace as well. This deck is the staple favorite, and it's all about comboing off of the cards that we've talked about on this video. All ongoing, big spectrum bonuses, and huge win conditions with the deck you're looking at here. Now, in this deck, it's all about really having Daredevil down early. We've got Ant-Man and Captain America to make up for that lack of power, and it's all just set up for a perfect turn five. Now, it comes at the con of not having Spectrum as a bigger payoff, and you can absolutely replace her in this deck. Um, I like her for a alternate win condition, just in case to get that extra push. But Daredevil is phenomenal to run with cards like Hobgoblin and Professor X. And then if you have Destroyer or Cosmo already set up, it's pretty much GG for the opponent. 
Now, Atuma does not need to be in here, but I think it's perfect to go ahead and follow him up by Professor X. And of course, you can throw in Rescue or Spider-Man as well. And this is definitely a version of the deck that I do like to run when I'm not going with the more staple option. Really, the deck is all about combos. Having a great turn two and three with Daredevil and Cosmo allows you to have a perfect turns five and six. And the replacement options all down below fit in perfectly if you're missing any of the cards. And then we also have the Destroyer. -er. You get the point. It's a destroy package with the destroyer card. And this deck is pretty straightforward. You've got the powerful combination that is the Bucky Barnes and Carnage combo. You can only just play Bucky. You can play Hood and get the demon into the armor lane. If your opponent plays armor to counter you, then awesome. You can go ahead and have that as a free protection from your destroyer. And then we have Daredevil to set up cards like Professor X and Hobgoblin, just like the deck before it. And uh, Sentry also works into this deck as well. You can eat up the Void, or you can send it on over to the opponent for a free Hobgoblin play with Viper. Uh, this is a fun deck, and I enjoy it a lot. Uh, Killmonger, Nova packages you can run, or Guardians of the Galaxy. Rescue, Spider-Man, same as before, but with a Destroy feel. Now let's move to the last deck. Uh, Zero is going to work with Destroyer. Check up above for that in Def Guide as I really go into the decks to use for that. Uh, but for the last deck, we have We Love Destroying. And we've got an Electro Wave Ramp deck that has the Kings of Destroy. We have Galactus, Null, Destroyer, and Death. Uh, obviously, this is all about getting Galactus out there to surprise your opponent and follow that up with either Null, Destroyer, or Death. And then at the same time, you've got a Ramp deck that can get Destroyer out there early, uh, get rid of those high power options like Lizard and Ebony Maw, and then you can play Null, which fits perfectly into the deck if you don't get Galactus. It's a lot of fun. This deck absolutely rips in the right hands. And if I'm being honest, I do think this deck is largely why Galactus is going to get nerfed. Uh, but definitely had to include it with a Destroyer flavored deck. Now let's hop into some matches and just kick some ass with this awesome card. I'm going to show you exactly why all of these cards work together so well and sing in this harmony or in this case destruction. Let's jump in. All right, so what an opening hand here. Uh, Ant-Man, Armor, Cosmo, Warpath. I'll take that curve all day. We've got Kamar Taj available. Um, we're not going to set up on the left lane this time. I'm going to put Cosmo and Kamar Taj to counter if he does have a Silver Surfer deck. He happens to have that as his avatar. And as long as this doesn't screw me with like a Space Throne or Super Flow. I mean, <laughs> that was destined. Who needs a watcher anyway, huh? We got our destroyed protected lane in Wakanda. Beautiful thing. Absolutely beautiful thing. Uh, now we can mojo in there early. I could go armor right side as well and just like double up. And if we get the destroyer, like we're, we're in business. I, I'm, I'm going to hang on to, to armor this turn. I think I'm going to go with mojo. I typically don't play mojo that early on, but we've got Warpath. I don't want to spread myself too much here. Um, and so we're going to go ahead and get hit with a double scorpion, which is uh, fantastic. Now, I did have Luke Cage as an alternate card. That's one of the reasons why he's great. Just dealing with all the scorpions out there. Uh, very popular in the meta at the moment. Uh, but we do have initiative, which is great. We're going to go and block off any other on reveal cards. And he is challenging our armor lane with Groot. All right. So we've got uh, the location where we're not going to really challenge all too much. Uh, war zone and armor as well. We're going to throw our war path down and I see us most likely polishing off this lane with claw rather than Iron Man. Mainly because we could just put a little bit of extra power on that right side either way. Now you guys have noticed we talked about this in the video every now and then you don't pull either win conditions. Very rare, but it can happen uh, So we need to keep that in mind. Now one of the ways I can prepare for this is we can either spread ourselves out or continue to spread ourselves out. Um, I think we're just going to go with the safe bet of Claw in the middle here. Iron Man's not a bad idea, especially because he can match us somewhat power-wise. Uh, but truly with Ant-Man and Mojo there, and by the looks of it, he's playing a Destroyer deck as well, we should be good to go. So Claw put the power in, and look who arrives. The badass is here. Never late, my guys. Never late, and he's snapping as well. So if he's got Enchantress, he would hurt himself in the middle. If he fills that out, we still win. We have six on the right. He's snapping, which is bold. He would really have to have something crazy uh, to beat us out here. So we're going to go ahead. We're, we're, we're not going to snap, but we're going to go and uh, challenge whatever he might be doing. 
He's going to have Silver Surfer middle. Fantastic. So, there you go. Um, not terrible. The guy definitely did some wrong math on his side. So, yeah, that was a safe bet for us and, and a very aggressive snap for him. Definitely one that I could counter snap on. Uh, just going for the Brood Silver Surfer follow-up. Typically, is not enough. Couldn't play Brood on the left side, obviously, because of our Cosmo. And that's like the staple win with the Destroyer, right? You got Claw to put some pressure on a lane that you don't have to contest. You get the huge value with Warpath that even got Scorpions twice. So this is the like core strategy, and that's why Wakanda is awesome, because you don't even have to use armor here. Okay, so we've slotted out the Mojo, and now we've got Sandman. So this is the uh, Pool 2 version of the deck. Only card we've got is a Pool 3 Destroyer. Now, uh, we also have our other ongoing cards, and we've got Sandman, uh, who is fantastic, because obviously we're going to use this cute little boy to go ahead and block off Mr. Negative and Sarah Dex. Uh, so let's go ahead and go to our next turn. We don't have Ant-Man, don't have anything we can play. And let's look at what we might want to do. Now, Bar Sinister is one of those locations, kind of like Kamartaj, where when you see it, you're probably thinking... Let's switch on over to the Spectrum build of the deck. Getting all these Spectrums to pop off is pretty much a no-brainer. And I'm going to challenge his Sunspot lane. And I think we're good to go. Uh, you can tell this guy's going to go ahead and be running the Leech deck. You know, the popular opening of Sunspot armor. Uh, or just using the good cards deck. And we're about to get a massive reshuffle as well. Um, so with him having armor on that other lane as well, we're just going to keep feeding our ongoing cards to this left side. He happened to get perfect play of the Maximus in the reshuffle. That guy's feeling like a million bucks and I don't blame him. And here we go. So this is great. We can already finish our Mr. Fantastic Ant-Man lane if we so choose. We did lose Spectrum, unfortunately. So we have to kind of keep that in mind for, for the future here. Um, if we played Mr. Fantastic in the middle... Actually, not the worst play, but because of the way he's setting himself up. We're just going to do Sandman. We're going to do Sandman. We're going to hope we pull Spectrum. I think Typhoid Mary is a combo card, so uh, it could be rough for him to make up for that. And we can go Warpath for the middle. Um, we have a couple of different things we can do. Now, honestly, with everything and how it's looking, I think we do the riskier play. And most likely, that's either playing Warpath in the middle... Or we can play Mr. Fantastic in the middle. If we played Mr. Fantastic in the middle, we're looking at eight extra power on each side. Uh, and then we have the Destroyer here as well. He can only play one card. So, you know, odds are looking pretty good. Uh, Warpath in the middle, though, would give us nine power four times. Gives us a bit of a better chance to win that. I think I'm going to go Mr. Fantastic middle. You know, if we pull Spectrum here, like bummer, but we'll go and swap to our Destroyer uh, deck instead. Uh, and he's playing nothing. So if he's playing leader, then uh, we're going to go ahead and play destroyer. And that's going to be GG. But if he goes for the middle lane, he can win there. If he goes for the right lane to win, he only has one card, right? And just to add to that chaos, we also got Spectrum. Now, the bad part is, of course, I wanted that for the middle. That's just a freaking bummer, man. That came in, uh, sadly, at the wrong time. If I played Spectrum right side... That's going to go ahead and it's going to give, it's going to make 16 in the middle and it's going to give us an additional six. So it's 21, 16 and, and 13 that spreads us across, across three lanes. Yo, I think we could just win with this, but this keeps us winning across all lanes. In the middle, he could play, there's really nothing I'm afraid of him playing. I'm going to be honest. I think Destroyer is kind of natural for that left side, but I think just challenging this right side is the way to go. It pushes us over there. Yeah, he's going to go Red Skull as his final play. And we spread ourselves far more wide here than focusing on two lanes. And on top of that, he's feeding us with all these Red Skulls. <laughs> uh, so this was definitely the safer play. Alrighty, so this one is going to be a bit different than our other games. We've got Daredevil and Professor X. And we also have a Hobgoblin this time. Now, sadly... I'm so sad. I forgot to just film the battle. I looked down. I wasn't recording, but I just won a battle by having a daily bugle hobgoblin. We both played it, and I played destroyer, killed my whole, whole board, and I won with just destroyer on my side. Absolutely epic. But what I want to showcase with this particular battle is uh, using daredevil. Uh, obviously, a lot of the cards that 
destroyer package runs uh you can have daredevil uh you do have two cards now that don't get the spectrum bonus but uh it still works because of a uh additional win condition that you can play um now we're gonna play mr fantastic here even though we're not gonna get our full uh you know wombo middle combo with him but that's okay he's gonna be storming middle and the hope is we get daredevil this round and if not it's not the end of the world there he is right on time um warpath obviously is the better value play here but i, I kind of want to showcase the deck for you guys i'd rather do that uh and he's definitely gonna be playing middle either way and let's let's go with dare let's go with daredevil left side we knew he's gonna play middle anyway he kills our ant man no big deal we still get to go ahead and pull extra two cards hopefully destroy your cosmo Cosmo Hobgoblin will take that and check that out. This is an awesome play. Awesome follow-up here. So we've got our pick of the litter. Let's see where this guy wants to play, and then we're going to kind of work around it. Now, obviously, right now, we don't have Cosmo. We don't have armor. We have no way to protect ourselves from the Destroyer. And with playing Hobgoblin this turn, Professor X this turn, uh, probably the best thing to do is play Professor X in one lane and Destroyer in the other. And uh, my hope is we can do it in this lane. Okay, cool. So he's going to be playing Brood. He is playing a Silver Surfer deck. We have closed off the middle lane, or he has. We're going to close off the right lane, and uh, he is not going to have any more room to play. So he loses. Um, so Destroyer obviously would have been played on our left side. Uh, still would have been difficult for him to beat that. Um, but we're going to go ahead and close that lane off and watch him retreat. Could have snapped. Not going to. It'll sink in here in just a moment. There it is. <laughs> So that would have been nice free cubes, but uh, I guess that's one reason I like Daredevil. Spectrum's a bit more risky, so you don't have to play Spectrum in the deck if you run more of a Daredevil combination, uh, as I've shown with the uh, example decks. Uh, but this is one that kind of ran both of them, giving you like legit three different ways to win or ways to complement the cards uh, that you have with Spectrum and Destroyer. We're back with a little bit of Omega Red Destroyer. Now, I love this combo. People do not expect it, which is the best thing going for it. Uh, for a powerful ability, if people aren't expecting it, it's always great to catch him by surprise. Um, but we're going to go ahead and have some fun with this one. And he is an option that you can run. Now, Scorpion is devastating as an opening move to us here. Um, but we did get relief with Wakanda, thank God. Um, so let's go ahead and start playing into that. Now, this guy's snapping off the bat. I don't know what he's thinking to, to have that happen so early. Mr. Fantastic's really our only play at the moment. Um, and we're probably just going to throw him here on the, uh, on the right side. He's got a ramp deck. Congratulations, Dan. I think we should be okay. Even if he ramps us, we, you know, what is he going to leader us and our destroyer? We should be fine. We're going to Omega Red, probably Iron Man this. Get Destroyer out now. Come on. Now, 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 now. Okay, we'll take it. So we lose Claw, and he plays our other options for us. I appreciate it. And we still get Iron Man as well, which is kind of fun. We win that lane. Congratulations. Hey. Thank you, Dan. That's uh, one way for this to kind of happen. Uh, <laughs> I wasn't expecting it, but we'll take it. If we get Spectrum here, it's going to be bad for this guy. I mean, Mojo, Ant-Man, very bad options. Captain America wouldn't be the worst here. We want to try to get the Omega Red pop off, uh, but it's a bad day. This guy's down negative one in the middle. Right side, we have a pretty strong, heavy approach. He went with the Doc Ock ramp pull off a snap. Dan, you brave man, you crazy human being. Now, that worked out. If if the Destroyer was the last card pulled, a little bit of a bummer. But at the same time, the Professor X kind of saved us there. That's going to give us eight. So it's tied here. But we've got the advantage of winning both lanes. And we got Captain America, which Captain is not bad. Captain's not bad for Iron Man because we get an immediate huge boost. We're going to add like 14 power to this right lane. And we own the middle lane. You know what, Dan, you SOB? He's going to snap on us. We're going to snap on him. He's out of here. Get out of here, Dan. Keep your damn Dr. Octopus as well. So that is the Omega Red option. Uh, that probably would have given us the power to have 10 over, and then we could have had even more power, even if we lost this Doc Ock push. So it's a fun option to use, and you could definitely do it as well.
So there are the destroyer battles in the games that I won, but what about the games I lost? I want to quickly introduce a new segment into these in-depth guides, the losing report. What is going to be the main offenders? How do you lose with these decks? Uh, because I don't want to waste your time and show the losses when we go through the battles. I want to show how the deck executes. But uh, for the battles that I did lose, here's some footage. Uh, we've got a hobgoblin that sadly took down me in the middle lane, which completely nullified and cut down my warpath's ongoing ability. Uh, so things like that you want to look out for. I had a huge RNG Scarlet Witch change the location to Central Park. And again, warpath went down with that. Uh, so two of the games was a big warpath power reduction. Uh, I lost to Galactus a couple of times. Was not expecting a Galactus in a handful of decks that I should have saw it coming. And then obviously in this meta, Silver Surfer, Maximus, Brood, these huge turn six plays can obviously beat Destroyer lanes. Uh, funny enough, I call it in this clip. I'll show you it briefly. If he happens to go like Maximus Silver, we're going to lose here, but we're going to roll those dice. He goes Maximus. That's funny. That's fantastic. So clearly that was one that I got outmatched a little bit. So there is some power calculations. You want to identify the decks that your opponent plays. And I'm going to have a whole video that talks about that coming up. Uh, so that last turn finish are the big things to identify. Uh, and hopefully this helps with the losing report. Let me know if you want me to include this on more in-depth guide videos in the future. So there it is. We've got the destroyer all packed up nicely into one video. How to play it, the cards to use, and why to use them. Hopefully you guys were interested in this archetype. I have plenty of other in-depth guides coming for future archetypes. And if that interests you and you already watched the channel, uh, go ahead and support by subscribing down below today. And if you took something away from this video, if you guys can help support by liking it as well as it's all YouTube cares about. Guys, wish you luck with the Destroyer deck. And until the next one, happy snapping.